As you can remember, I posted a poll in my community a few weeks back asking you guys what I should make next. So here it is. But before we start, I'm going to show you first how to change the scale of your helmet according to your head using Papakura. So to start, you need to print this template that I put in the description of this video. The template is from the channel Wayne's Workshop. Make sure to check his videos because they are very helpful if you are into cosplay. Anyway, after you finish printing the template, you should then glue it to a piece of cardboard or trace it if you want. Then create another one from cardboard again. After that, connect the two pieces from this circle here and you should have now your own DIY caliper. You can now measure things from point to point like this, then grab a ruler and measure the distance from there. To use it in our head, I first measure the distance from my chin to the top of my head. Then after that, I input the measurement I got to Pepakura and then scale it up by 10%. I do this because I do not want the helmet to be the same size as my head because I'm not going to be able to wear it if that's the case. And then I check the distance between the chin and the top of the helmet by right clicking here and selecting measure distance between two points. Then I left click in this point here and here and then the distance between those two points should pop up on your screen and now you can check if that is the right size for your head or not. Now if you are still confused on how to scale your helmet or other 3D models in Papakura, I put the link of Wayne's workshop video about scaling in Papakura down in the description. And now that we are done scaling, we can now start making. All the files for this helmet are in the description so please check it out. I first cut out the template using a cutter and then glue them into a piece of cardboard. Just for reference, the cardboard I'm using is around 2mm thick. After I'm done gluing the pieces, I then cut them out again using a cutter. To clear things up, if you see this line right here on the template, that means it is a mountain fold and you should fold it like this. And if you see this line right here, that means it is a valley fold and you should fold it like this. At this point, nothing really important or special is going to happen next except sticking the pieces together correctly. So yeah, you can just watch me do the boring part or skip it since I put the timestamp in the description of this video. For this piece, I drew two holes for the nose here and then cut them out using a cutter. Now, to combine the separated piece, I first drew a line to either one of the separated pieces and cut it out using a cutter. And then I tape it to the other separated piece.
Finally, the helmet or cowl is finished, but before I move on to making the helmet sturdy, I first added supports inside the helmet using sticks. We can now move on to applying resin, which is the most important part of this whole build. I use polyester resin for this one. You can also use epoxy resin, but since I can't find one, I just stick to polyester resin. Now you're probably wondering why do I need to apply resin to this helmet. Well, as you can see, applying resin to a cardboard helmet makes it stronger since the resin creates a hard shell to the cardboard, keeping its shape and making it more durable against water. After it dries, I applied resin to the inside of the helmet. Now, I mentioned earlier that the resin makes the helmet stronger and more durable, but that is not enough. There is a mesh that we can apply inside the helmet like a paper mache and it's called fiberglass cloth. But since I can't find one, I just use another type of fiberglass which is a woven roving type. It works the same, it's just a little bit thicker than the cloth type. We are going to apply it inside the helmet, and it works just like paper mache. We're going to saturate the cardboard with resin first, then paste the fiberglass there, and then saturate it again with resin. After that, I cleaned up the helmet by removing the pointy bits from the fiberglass using a mini Dremel. I then sanded the helmet using a 100 grit sandpaper. Now, in this part, I'm going to draw a line here for a guide on where I'm going to cut the helmet so that I can wear it on my head. I then cut the helmet down using a hacksaw. We are now in the process of applying wood filler to the helmet. And again, just like with resin, you're probably not familiar with wood filler. We apply wood filler to the helmet so that it creates an even and smooth surface, removing jagged edges and bumps on the helmet and making it more realistic than looking like a prop. So yeah, wood filler is also an important part for this build. After the wood filler dries, I sanded it using a 200 grit sandpaper to make it smooth. Make sure to wear a breathing mask when sanding wood filler because there's a high risk of inhaling dust particles from the wood filler and Inhaling dust particles is obviously bad for your health. And we are just going to repeat that process to the whole helmet of applying wood filler and sanding it until we have a smooth finish. It's been 5 days of applying and sanding wood filler and I'm more surprised that I didn't go insane during those 5 days than me being surprised that the helmet still fits my head. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to enlarge the holes for the eyes because they look smaller than the original and also because someone in my community tab says that the eyes look small and that I should fix them. I'm using some reference photos here that I found online as a guide so that I can draw how big the eyes should be. I sanded it down using a mini Dremel and this is what it looks like. Lastly, I added this detail to the eyes using wood filler. The helmet now looks pretty good and we can now move on to painting. I first applied 3 coats of filler primer to the helmet to fill up some imperfections on the surface like scratches or dents and then I sanded it down using 600 grit sandpaper to make it smooth. After that, I applied 3 coats of matte black spray paint to the helmet and take note that it is important to use matte black here and not the glossy one because the glossy one will make the helmet look inaccurate from the movie since the movie version is not shiny. The helmet is finally finished and for the moment you've been waiting for, I am now going to wear the helmet. But first, I'm gonna apply some black eye makeup to me so that I can actually feel Batman coming inside me. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> <laughs>